hello viewers welcome back to the course on scientific computing using MATLAB. So today we are going to discuss the lecture 25. So in the previous lecture we have discussed the iterative method that is the gauss jacobi method. So now we will continue with the another method and that is called the gauss seidel So this is also a iterative method. Now it is a it is a small change in the uh, Jacobi method. So if we remember, then from the Jacobi method, or we got, I we have a system of equation a x is equal to b, and we got this iteration process x1 was b1 minus a 1 to x2 a 1 and xn. So, this is all divided by a 1 1 then x2 is b2 minus a 2 1 x1 plus a 2 3 x3 and it is a 2 n x n divided by a 2 2. So, it is b n minus a 1 x 1 up to a n n minus 1 x n minus 1. I am dividing it by a n n and we know that the matrix my matrix A is diagonal dominant and this coefficients the, the diagonal elements are not 0 in this case. So, what do we do that now I can make this as a iterative process. So, from here you, you can see that I will start with this one and I will write this as the same as k because I have the initial approximation x 0. So, this is the given approximation to me I will put the values there and I will get this value here. Now, what I do that I will use this value. So, whatever the value updated value I am getting I am using this value here and I will write this as a k plus 1 and this term is will be k. So, in this case what I am doing? I am using the updated value of x 1 to find the value of x 2. In the Jacobi method we are using the same k everywhere to find this whole vector as a to, to find the updated value of the whole vector, but here we are not doing like we are taking whatever the updated value is available to me I will use that value to find the updated value of the another variable. So, in this case we will keep going like this one and in the last one I will use as a k plus 1 next and k plus 1. So, whatever the value is available to me I will use this one and then this process is called gauss seidel process. So, this is a not much difference between the gauss jacobi and the gauss seidel only thing is that so, this is the more updated value and from here we can also see that that this method may converge faster than gauss jacobi So, now we will find out that so in this case, so I know that the sufficient condition is there for the convergence of the uh, gauss uh, jacobi and gauss hidden method now we'll find out the condition of convergence of iterative method now what is the there so i have my process ax is equal to b so this is uh, the process given to me what i can do that i can convert my matrix a into this form l plus d plus u so this is i can call it lower triangular matrix 
with 0 diagonal. So, all the elements of the diagonal are 0. This one is diagonal matrix. So, diagonal matrix with the diagonal elements of A having having diagonal elements of A as a diagonal elements and this one is upper triangular matrix upper triangular matrix with 0 diagonal elements. For example, I have a matrix, suppose I take the matrix A is equal to 1, minus 1, 2, 3, 1 point 5, 4, 2, 1, 0. So, suppose I take this matrix. So, I do not want the diagonal elements to be 0. So, this one I can write diagonal elements cannot be 0. Because if this is the case, then I will change this one to this form 1 minus 1 2 2 1 0 3 1.54. Now, there is no diagonal element that is 0. So, I will convert this one into the form like this one now. I will write L. So, it is 0 0 0 0 0 0, 0 2 3 1.5. So, I will write like this one. So, in this case I have I have taken this element, this element and this element. So, that is same as this one and then I will write plus my diagonal matrix. So, diagonal matrix I write 1, 1, 4. So, this is same as this one here and all other are 0 plus then I take the another matrix upper triangular. So, I left with only this, this and this. So, I will take this as a minus 1 to 0 and this is all other elements at 0. Okay, so, from here I can cite that this is my L, this is my D and this is my U. So, I can say that my matrix A is now L plus D plus U and D matrix is invertible. Invertible means it does not have because I know that the the diagonal elements, the magnitude or the determinant of the diagonal diagonal matrix is 1 into 1 So, that will be 1 into 1 into 4. So, 4 is the value. So, if any of the diagonal element is 0, then it will be 0 and it is not invertible. So, we want our D should be invertible. So, that is why we have to make the changes. So, any matrix can be written as a form of L plus D plus U then. So, let us see that condition for convergence of iterative process. We know that the diagonal dominance is there, but diagonal dominance is the sufficient condition. Now, we are talking about the necessary condition. So, this is the necessary condition we are going for. Necessary condition that what will happen if the matrix is not the diagonal dominant. So, if the matrix is not diagonal dominant, then it may converge or may not converge. So, let us start with the first one. If the goes 
Jacobi. So in the Gauss Jacobi, you know that I have A x is equal to B. So that is my L plus D plus U. So this is given to me. Now from here I can write. So from from the Gauss Jacobi method, you know that I will take the all the elements of L on the right hand side and all the elements of U on the right hand side. So from here I can make this system as I can write this system as B minus L plus U X. So this can be written as and then D is invertible that is non-zero. So from here I can write x can be written as D inverse B minus D inverse L plus U x and this is the my iterative process. So that is the short form of the Gauss Jacobi method. So this is my Gauss Jacobi method. Now I also know that I can write my system as so this one I can write as a x is equal to b. So from here I can write l plus d plus u x is equal to b. So from here I can write my x can be written as d inverse b minus d inverse l plus u x where x is the exact solution. So I can take it as a 1 and I can take it as a 2. Now subtracting 1 from 2. So I can write 1 from 2. So from here I will get x minus x k plus 1. This can be written as now if you see from here this minus this. So this will cancel out. So from here I can write that this will become minus d inverse l plus u x plus d inverse L plus U X K and from here I can write that minus so this is equal to not implies so this is uh, equal to minus D inverse L plus U and from this I can take common so the uh, inside I will get X minus X K. So this is what? It is the exact solution minus the approximation at the kth step. This is the exact solution and minus the approximation at the k plus 1 step. So let x minus x k is e k. So that is my e k. So that is I call it error at kth step. So from here I can write from this that I can write E k plus 1 is equal to, so I call this matrix as H matrix H E k where my H is equal to minus D inverse L plus U and this is called convergence matrix. So everything depends upon what is this matrix and if you remember from the previous uh, lectures when we were dealing with the uh, nonlinear equation like uh, Newton methods or secant methods. So in that case if you see that this is just a number then you know that x k plus 1 some number is there c x k. So if note that the error. So, E k is equal to C 
e k minus 1 like this one and then we can change this one into e k is equal to c k e 0 if you remember by the continuous substitution then we know that if this error is some error is there and I want that this tends to the this error tends to 0 then we know that the c k then this can be possible when the c is less than 1 because when the c is less than 1 the more power of c will be much smaller and then this will go to 0. The same concept we can apply here but here we are dealing with the matrix. So, how we can deal with such type of things? Now I know that this is my matrix. So, let H has n eigenvalues and n linearly independent eigenvectors. So, I know that I am saying that H x is equal to lambda x. So, not x I am not I should not take this x. So, suppose this I am taking uh, h v is equal to some lambda v. So, it will it is n cross n matrix. So, it will have a n number of eigenvalues. So, I am considering that this eigenvalue is there and eigenvalue is there and they we are getting the l linearly independent eigenvectors. So, that we are considering here. Now, from here I can say that, so using this one value I can write, now what I do is that from equation number uh, maybe which equation number is there, 1 is there, so I can call it 2 equation. So, equation 2 can be written as E k plus 1 is equal to H E k and that can be written as H H E k minus 1 and that can be written as H H H E k minus 2 and so on. So, in the end I can write this as a E k plus 1 can be written as H k and then it is E 1. Okay and E 1 is the initial approximation or we can write this one as H k plus 1 E 0. So, whenever we are dealing with H E k plus 1 then this value will come. So, I can write this as a this equation. So, I call it 3. Now, we consider that let my E 0, what is my E 0? E 0 is x minus x 1 0, x 2 minus x 2 0, x n minus x n 0. So, that is a vector basically. So, I call this vector that this vector can be written as a linear combination of these eigenvectors. So, whatever the eigenvector I am taking, so this eigenvectors. So, let this is equal to some c i v i i from 1 to n. So, I am considering this one that this vector can be written as a linear combination of the eigenvectors of the matrix H. So, from here I can write now my E k plus 1 can be written as h k plus 1 and E 0 I can apply, I can put this value here. And then this C i is I know that the C i are scalars, in fact like a real scalar. So, I can write this equation as summation and I can take this h inside. So, I can write C i h k plus 1 v i and this can be written as summation i from 1 to n c i and h k plus 1 v i is what? So, instead of this I just write uh, 
E naught H. So, this is I will just write H and using this one I will get this value and this becomes H V 1 V i and from here this is equal to i plus 1 to n C i lambda i V i because H of V i V i is equal to lambda i V i the ith eigenvalue. So, from here I can get my H E naught is equal to this one. Now, from here I can again apply H square E naught. So, that will be H of H E naught and this can be written as again summation i from 1 to n C i and then lambda i H V i and from here I apply the same method again. So, this will be C i lambda i and this is again the lambda i. So, I can write it square V i. So, if I keep going like this then from here I can write that H k plus 1 e 0 can be written as summation i from 1 to n C i lambda i power k plus 1 V i. So, this can be written like this. Now, from here and that is equal to E k plus 1. Now, if I want that my method that E k plus 1 tends to 0 as k tends to infinity. So, this is possible if the lambda i is magnitude less than 1 because if the magnitude is less than 1 then this quantity will go to 0 if k tends to infinity. So, if the k tends to infinity this value tends to 0 because C i is constant. So, that cannot be changed and V i is also the constant vector that cannot be changed. So, if my lambda i is going to 0 then I can say that my error going to 0. So, from here this is possibility when I take the magnitude of lambda i that should be less than 1 because the then the the more power of lambda will become much smaller and then it will tends to 0. So, that is called the so this is the necessary condition. So, necessary condition means that that if the iterative process is convergent the error is going to 0 then my lambda i should be less than 1. So, this I have considered. So, that is the necessary condition. So, this is a, we have calculated for the gauss jacobi method. The same way I will see what will happen in the case of gauss seidel So, this magnitude I have taken if lambda is are real then then absolute value and if lambda is are complex then magnitude should be less than 1 or so, Gauss Seidel uh, got Seidel matter. So, in this case I can write my same L plus D plus U x is equal to B and from here I can write from here. So, this is my suppose this one. So, from here in this name I know that it can be written as L plus D x is equal to B minus B minus U x because in this case we are keeping this. So, now I can write this as a this because in the Gauss-Seidel method if you see 
then I am updating the values of x this one. So, in the first case it is ok, in the second case the left part will be the updated value. So, left part will be the updated value, it means that the I have to choose the lower triangle matrix in the updated way. So, from here I can write like this and from here L plus D inverse I am taking is invertible because L plus D will be a lower triangle matrix. matrix and D I already told you that in, in the diagonal element no element is 0. So, that will be the determinant will be non 0. So, from here I can write my x k plus 1 can be written as L plus D inverse B minus L plus D inverse U x k. So, this is there. So, that is I can take it as equation number 1. So, that is my short form of the gauss seidel method. Also, I can write from here my x can be written as L plus d inverse b minus L plus d inverse u x, where x is exact solution. So, the same way subtracting. So, 2 minus 1. So, it will give you the x minus x k plus 1 is equal to. So, this will cancel out and then I will get minus L plus D inverse u x minus x k. So, from here I can write that this is my E k plus 1 is equal to this is my H and this is my E k. So, from here I can say that my H is minus L plus D inverse U. So, this is my convergence matrix. So, in this case my convergence matrix is different from the Gauss uh, Jacobi method and from here the same condition will happen that my E k plus 1 can be written as H of k plus 1 E 0. So, <coughs> in this case also the same way the convergence that the Eigen values of H that is lambda i modulus should be less than 1. So, this is possible I can say from here that the largest eigenvalue should be less than 1. It can be also written as a and this is called spectral radius. Spectrum is the set of all eigenvalues and the largest eigenvalue is the spectral radius. So, this one can be written as there. So, with the same condition is that the necessary condition for the convergence is that that it should be less than 1. The largest eigenvalue should be less than 1. So, that is also the necessary condition in the terms of ghost Seidel method. So, uh, now we are able to find the ghost Jacobi method and the ghost Seidel method and this H and H may be different. The note is there, one note. that if matrix A is not diagonal dominant, then it may happen that one method is convergent and another may not because both the cases this matrix is different. So, if the matrix is different the eigenvalues are different. So, it may happen that one method will converge and another method may not. If the matrix is normal, if the matrix is dynamic then definitely it is going to converge. 
So this is uh, we stop here and this is all about uh, the Gauss Seidel method and their convergence. So maybe in the next class we will go further. So thanks for watching, uh, thanks very much.